In this cardiac review article in the current 2020 March-April issue of Radiographics, Drs. Pena de Carvalho and Francisco Acevedo from Rio de Janeiro and Duke University, respectively, provide a detailed review of endomyocardial fibrosis, or EMF, with cardiac MRI. This condition, most prevalent in the tropical and subtropical regions of the southern hemisphere, is pathologically similar to Loeffler's endocarditis, or eosinophilic myocarditis, although it is considered a separate entity with distinct risk factors, including endemic parasitic diseases, poverty, malnutrition, and genetic predisposition. Figure 1 summarizes the main proposed pathogenesis theories and the typical stages of EMF. The disease has acute and chronic phases. The acute stage is characterized by recurrent inflammatory episodes of pancarditis, followed eventually by restrictive heart failure, which carries a 75% two-year mortality rate. Pathologically, there is endocardial fibrosis affecting the ventricular inflow tract and apices that spares the outflow tracts with small V-shaped ventricles and dilated atria. The left ventricle is affected in approximately half of patients, with the remainder showing right ventricular or biventricular involvement. Table 3 offers a standard non-ischemic cardiomyopathy MR protocol for evaluation of EMF, with CINE steady state free procession imaging the mainstay of morphologic evaluation. On delayed enhanced imaging, there is characteristic subendocardial enhancement termed the V sign, without or with overlying thrombus, which when present is known as the double V sign. Fibrotic involvement of the papillary muscles causes distortion of the mitral and tricuspid valves, leading to regurgitation and marked atrial dilatation. Ventricular thrombi are frequently present. MR is more sensitive and specific in the detection of ventricular thrombi than transthoracic or transesophageal echocardiography. Table 5 summarizes the MR protocols for EMF and the associated MR findings on the various sequences. Aside from managing the heart failure seen in these patients, management of acute disease typically involves corticosteroids and immunosuppressive agents, although there are no trials to confirm improved outcomes from these therapies. Selected patients may be considered for open endocardectomy with valve repair or replacement. Increasing fibrous tissue deposition in the heart, as determined by delayed enhancement MR, is associated with worse New York Heart Association functional class, a higher likelihood of endocardectomy, and is an independent predictor of mortality. Other associations include a high prevalence of atrial fibrillation in patients with right ventricular or biventricular EMF and pleural and pericardial effusions and ascites in those with right ventricular involvement. The differential diagnosis of EMF includes the entities summarized in Table 6. Apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or Yamaguchi disease, may be the most difficult entity to distinguish from EMF. Important distinguishing features include, one, the apical obliteration seen in EMF is seen in both systole and diastole, whereas in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it appears predominantly in systole. Two, obliteration of the apical cavity is abrupt in endomyocardial fibrosis and more gradual in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And three, Delayed enhancement in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is more mid-wall and patchy as compared to the pattern of uniform subendocardial enhancement seen in EMF. Apical thrombus due to ischemic heart disease, as may be seen after an infarct, and thrombus complicating non-ischemic cardiomyopathy are distinguished by history and by the type and distribution of delayed enhancement. Left ventricular non-compaction is a cardiomyopathy with a wide spectrum of phenotypic manifestations defined by prominent left ventricular trabeculae, deep intratrabecular recesses, and a thin myocardial compacted layer. Mural endocardial thrombosis may be present in some patients 
which in some scenarios may be difficult to differentiate from EMF. Again, cardiac MRI provides valuable information on morphology and enhancement patterns, aiding in differential diagnosis. Cardiac amyloidosis may manifest as diffuse hypertrophy and subendocardial enhancement associated with abnormal gadolinium kinetics, which leads to unusually dark blood at delayed enhancement cardiac MRI. Apical obliteration with fibrothrombotic mass deposition, a hallmark feature of EMF, is not seen in cardiac amyloidosis.